for a podcast on this topic. Hmm. Which one should I choose? Mm, I think I'm going to go for this one. Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm absolutely thrilled to chat with you today about something that's not only crucial in human research, but also deeply resonates with our collective conscience, social responsibility, as outlined in the British Psychological Society's Code of Ethics. Now let's dive right in. Social responsibility is all about ensuring that our research doesn't just serve the academic community, but also contributes positively to society. But what does that really mean? First off, it's about the obligation we have to conduct research that benefits the community. Did you know that, according to recent studies, over 70% of researchers believe their work should address social issues? Isn't that fascinating? But how often do we see research that genuinely reflects this commitment? Let's break it down. The first part of social responsibility is about considering the impact of our research on society. Every study we conduct has the potential to influence lives, whether it's a new psychological intervention or an analysis of societal trends. We need to ask ourselves, is this helping or harming? Are we perpetuating stereotypes or challenging them? It's a moral obligation to ensure our work is ethical and constructive. Next, we have the principle of promoting well-being. This means that our research should aim to enhance the quality of life for individuals and communities. Think about it. How often do we consider the broader implications of our findings? For instance, if we uncover a new treatment method, are we advocating for its accessibility? Or are we keeping it locked away in academic journals? Are we truly being responsible researchers if our work doesn't reach those who need it most? Moving on, let's discuss the importance of engaging with diverse communities. This principle emphasises inclusivity and representation in research. Did you know that studies involving diverse populations yield more reliable results? It's essential to include voices that have been historically marginalised. If we fail to do this, whose knowledge are we valuing? Whose experiences are we ignoring? And then there's the part about being transparent and accountable. This means sharing our findings, good, bad and ugly, with the public. Transparency builds trust and accountability ensures that we are held responsible for the outcomes of our research. But here's a question for you. Are we genuinely ready to face criticism and learn from it? It. Now let's not forget about the promotion of ethical standards in research practices. This is about setting an example for others to follow. When we adhere to high ethical standards, we foster a culture of integrity. But can we really call ourselves ethical researchers if we turn a blind eye to misconduct in our field? So what can we take away from this? Social responsibility in research is not just a box to tick off, it's a commitment to making a difference. We have the power to shape society through our work. Isn't that an incredible responsibility? As we wrap up today's episode, I encourage you to reflect on how you can incorporate these principles into your own research. Let's strive to be researchers who not only seek knowledge, but also use it to uplift and empower our communities. Thank you for joining me today. If you found value in this discussion, please share it with your friends and subscribe for more insights. Until next time, stay curious and socially responsible.